We did it. It's a new year. Happy new year to you, your friends and family. It's going to be a fun, fun year. Not only is it a new year, it's a new studio tour. I hope you guys are excited for a lot more tours and uh, a lot more wonderful people. We're going to do a lot. It's going to be great. So today we're going to go see my friend Warren David and his studio, The Arena. Warren is a recording and mix engineer, and he built a studio in his backyard, a standalone building. Uh, we did a tour of his studio at the, I think at the end of 2020, probably when I started doing these tours. Really cool room. But he did something crazy, and he went, again, went ahead and upgraded his studio to an Atmos mix room. So figured we'd do like a part two mini tour, catch up with Warren, see what's changed in his room, talk about the Atmos upgrade, pros and cons, and a few other things, and get into the gear installation and all that stuff. Let me know what you guys think about Atmos and the whole phenomena of the Atmos mixing and spatial and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think of Warren's studio in general down in the comments. Again, I'll put a link to Warren and his studio, The Arena, down in the description if you, want to, you guys want to check that out. And I want to say thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. You guys might not know this, but Sweetwater actually has a gear exchange website now at sweetwater.com slash used, where you can sell your used gear. And what's cool is they have a 5% sales fee, seller fee, and then a 2.5% transaction fee. So 7.5 total fee on selling whatever you sell, unless you take your payment in a Sweetwater gift card to buy new gear, and then there is no fee, which is pretty rad, especially if you're just like trying to get something new and you got some other stuff you're trying to get rid of. Now, I'm actually going to be setting up a little gear exchange store myself. I'll put a link to that down in the description, but you know, we're, things are going to be changing it up this year as, as I do every four days in my studio. Some of the stuff that I just either don't have room for or I really don't use that often. I'm going to be putting up in that source if you want to check it out. Uh, link in the description. Thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys for watching, liking, subscribing. Subscribe to the channel. Hey, why not? Another year, you know, probably been watching for a while. Never thought to hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and give it a tap. All right, let's do it. Let's go check out Warren's studio, The Arena. All right, so for those who missed the original tour, if you want, I'll link it down in the description as well as all of Warren's stuff, but we'll do a mini tour here on the place because it, some things have changed, uh, up, updates here. This is a building, separate building yep. from your house. What's the like footprint of this building? So it's about 600 square feet, Okay. probably a little over, and then two rooms. This one's a little smaller and it might be a tracking space. Like I'm kind of collecting the instruments and the gear mm -hmm. to do it. Got some like dead drums over there, yeah. a hundred year old piano, you know, an old vintage guitar. I'm like trying to collect these specific sounds that other people might not bring in. You got a bathroom. Yep. And then that was like, what was in there the, before? I remember you this was me like a crazy hard drives or something. Uh, yeah. I mean, server and hard drives with a lot of archive stuff cabling and shelves and whatnot. This is so. nice, dude. The cool thing now that I got Dante is like over ethernet, I can just send audio to this computer as yeah. well. Yeah. Oh yeah, you got the mini split up there. Mm -hmm. So how's that been? Because you've had that now for a couple of years. How's oh, it's great. Been? It's been no issues. No issues. So That's great. All right, and then we got the control room, the mix room, the arena. You went all the way with the treatment in here. You built all of it, right? Yes. Break it down a little bit. Sim the simplified I, version, because this yeah. this whole thing it, is mind blowing. I went I went in detail in the last video, so definitely watch that. But mm -hmm. basically, six five five ish to six surfaces are covered with stuff. You yeah. know, um, lots of insulation. That wall goes back four feet. There's a lot of stuff back there hanging and trying to diffuse the sound, absorb the sound. What's the guy's name? John Sayers. So there's the John Sayers Forum. Uh, that was just a, a wealth of information. John Brandt, I kind of like studied some of his designs. And there were some people in town that I consulted with to kind of help guide me. And like another thing that wasn't in the other video is these front panels over the, time. The lower ones? Yep. Yeah, I was gonna say that those look I, uh, I was measuring things and testing things out. And I even just had the raw insulation up there and I would move it and just test what happened when I moved it. Yeah. And found a really good configuration 
that really helped the front. Yeah. And so just lots of that little tweaking. Yeah, this is nice. It's, it's kind of like a, I don't know, I'm gonna sound just ultra dumb, but like a triple bass trap here. You, it you is, got the, yeah. You got the original one in the back corner. You got an, another little air gap yep. panel, air gap panel. Both of these are up, up off the floor so you can kind of go back there and. Uh, air gaps um, are really helpful with controlling bass. Mo a lot of people just slam insulation against the wall. Yeah. But like that air gap helps the coefficient of like, I forget what it's called, absorption coefficient. Mm. Um, Shots fired. Yeah. <laughs> That's my room. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's helpful, but like, yeah, no. man, when I was configuring this stuff, like just placing it in different places. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Like you could see it on the graph. Like if I go two inches thick, four inches thick, air gap, plus this, plus the other one. But the room, yeah. when you built the room, was just sort of standard concrete drywall. Standard then, concrete, I framed it like the room within a room and loaded up the front with like 12 inch on center spacing. And then as we go down, I splayed that out a little more so that the resonance of the drywall would be different. Uh, but yeah, it's double layered. I mean, that wall is super thick and just like you hit it and it just doesn't resonate at all. That's um, sick. Yeah, the room is ultra quiet. So what else? You, you got I mean, just uh, traded out some some instruments and gear, but just hunting for sounds, you know? So I got this oh, yeah. uh, like Beatles-esque, like flat wound, real woody Ooh, sounding yeah. thing. Yeah. It's a little buzzy at the moment. Oh, Gretsch whoa, Berry. nice. So I've actually used this quite a bit because when I'm mixing and stuff's just not there, mm -hmm. you know, like maybe you've got your guitars and you got your bass and you just feel like it needs something else. Mm. I might throw this in the mix process to like, beef up a part so it's like supplementary to what someone already has going yeah that's extra credit right there dude yeah this was a really nice find um, i worked with a band called common noble everybody should check them out they had a guitar like this and i just love the tone i love the gibson style like i guess 335 yeah, yeah, yeah style. exactly yeah um not even sure if this company is a thing anymore sublime sublime yeah um but put a bigsby on it i've always wanted a Bigsby 335, so. That's so cool, it looks um, beautiful. Yeah, man, it's it's real nice and vibey. Um, and then just recently got this Larave OM28. And a word of advice to people is if you're going with a natural, don't go with a natural finish. I should say <laughs> that because. It's so loud. It's just, it's a shaker, but it sounds great. And I didn't want to dish out twice the price for a the Martin. Martin. <laughs> yep. But then this is like a little gem find for sure so this if you're familiar with uh the show this is us it's just a super dead vibey guitar like i loved okay. how dead it sounded uh -huh. and i hunted for it so it's actually that guitar that's out there silver tone from the 60s it's like a little box guitar uh -huh. and i saw this one at the same time and got both okay and this one just sounds so good it's so dead oh yeah Get a copyright strike on oh, that? Oh, 100%. It's a beautiful sounding dead guitar. Got some new mics down there. I had like sold a bunch of mics to put it into this room and now I'm slowly building back the mic mm. locker. So got one of those uh, AEA R R R 88s. Yeah, so yeah. that is just a beautiful um, ribbon mic and um, stereo 414s. Got a Bach 251. I've wanted a Bach oh, cool. since came to town and the dude was using it. I was like, I gotta get one of those one day. Do you often yeah. do like overdubs here? When people Every come now in? and then, like again, like supplemental guitar, yeah. I'll throw it on. Um, every now and then it's fun to just overdub something or if I'm producing, mm -hmm. like bringing the artist in to do acoustic or vocals here, um, it's nice to have just a good, like couple staples, you know? Heck yeah. So when, when you first came, I was like, one or two months from finishing this space, I had just like tuned the room. There was a trend oven here. There was like pro oh, ax yeah. and two subs. Um, and it, it was dialed. Like I, I felt good about it. And I even remember saying, I don't know if I'll ever move away from the pro ax. Well, yeah. like after that video came out, I started hunting for monitors and was like trying a few things. I tried ATC 25s, PMC 228s, 226s, uh, ATC 50s. And I, I like moved them around, 
very methodically. I took measurements and everything. And even with a Trinov, the tuning system, none of them were as solid as my Proact two sub thing. It's not to say there weren't like pros and cons of each, mm -hmm. but there were some major dips and nulls and things. And I was yeah. like, why would I pay $10,000 for some compromises? But then my buddy turned me on to Dutch and Dutch. He was like, you gotta try these. And I was like, never heard of them. You're crazy, I'm not spending that much money. I put them in and magic happened. I, I heard music anew. All the problems that were in the other speakers went away. Mm. So these are special on their own. Part of the thing is, I mean, people can research. They've got a cardioid design. So like speaker boundary interference, cabinets, mm -hmm. the sound will wrap around it and also is spherically moving outward under 500 Hertz. Like it's gonna hit things, it's gonna come back, you're gonna get phase shift, it's gonna wrap around and seem funky once it gets to your ears. But these, they work with the wall, they couple with it, like you, you tune it with the room, with distances and all this stuff. And so it's one unified sound coming at you. Above 100 hertz, it's all directional. There's none of that like side boundary stuff. Um, so how is that happening? What, what's, what? They, they just designed it really well. They designed it, um, they kind of took from live sound, it's mm -hmm. like cardioid sub stuff and their hi-fi guys is like their background. And so they're just deep in the like hi-fi engineering of things, physics of sound, like they're super technical. Is there something unique to where, like when you place them, do you change something or it just automatically yeah. can tell? Well, one, I think you can automatically tell just yeah, without yeah. touching anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that system that I had with two Pro Acts, a Bryston 4B, a Trinov tuning system, two subs coming through, you know, gear, that's a lot of variables. And this unified the sound into like one box. It went lower mm. and flatter than that whole system. There was already a benefit, but then there's like a actual like tuning interface that you can get into yeah. and tweak some parameters. You can like tweak how far from the walls you are mm -hmm. and it'll calculate that and make that adjustment. And then it's just this unified sound with a lot of headroom. I became such a believer in them I asked if I could be like a dealer. Yeah. And so anytime people are looking for new speakers or studio consulting, I'm like, hey, just put these in, try them out. Like you're gonna pay less for these yeah. the than you way. would like PMC, ATC. And I think you're gonna get more mileage out of them. So Dutch and Dutch, 8C Studios. Okay. Um, they're probably coming out with a smaller model next year that I'm really looking forward to. Oh yeah. To replace the Atmos surround which was like the next upgrade beyond these. Okay, so you, you got a bunch of other speakers in here now. Yeah, so. Um, How, what, <laughs> what, why? Uh, so the Atmos train is a thing. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I kind of saw it coming, especially after your um, interview with the Axis studio. Right, yeah. I was looking into it and decided, ah, I probably won't do this. And then I started getting some requests yeah. from like people that I work with. And I'm just big on serving people, meeting the needs, doing it excellently, and kind of saw the void in the circles that I run in. So I was like, all right, mm -hmm. like I'll bite the bullet. Yep. I'll invest in this. Um, and went to Westlake. I kind of split it between Westlake and Sweetwater, mm -hmm. some stuff. Um, and got the Avid Matrix Studio, which, you know, I hate being a slave to Avid, but the mm -hmm. dad man software and the digital yeah. audio denmark stuff is amazing but like that whole matrix that happens the dad thing yeah i remember my friend travis yeah. showing me this and i was like this feels like 1997. it it's <laughs> yeah it's definitely windows xp yeah or before windows yeah. 95 maybe yeah what they've done in that box in that one box you get dante you get like the hd connection to Oh computer. yeah, for native. Um, and then, yeah, I mean for Atmos, like this monitor controller where you can program any button to be anything. And then also, I've, I haven't quite set this up yet with the Stream Deck to have more buttons for mm -hmm. this. Um, it's just super versatile. Like, I don't think I'd ever go back to another monitor controller. Whoa. That's less versatile. Whoa. Well, so I, for I, Atmos, it makes sense. I will give it credit. Uh, points in my book. This is the first time I've ever seen this, by the way. Mm. Um, That's the dad mom. It's slick. It's sleek. 
Mm -hmm. It's not a big, giant, ugly thing. And it doesn't have 9 million cables coming out of the back. Oh, yeah. Ethernet. Yep. Ethernet and power. That's what all I ask from moniker controllers. I'm so... Let it be a remote. Yeah. Plug it in all over there. Mm -hmm. So it's great. And it, and it has tuning software as well. So like when Dolby came here to tune the room and yeah. also a guy from Sweetwater came to give his two cents on yeah. tuning the room too, we were able to adjust things in the software to get it to Dolby specs and you know delay alignments and right. phase alignments, all that kind of stuff. You have to have an LFE channel for, okay. um, for Atmos. So mm -hmm. this is the Fathom uh, F, I think 112. V112 or something like that. So that, those those are the additions, speaker wise, um, to Atmos. And the, so. okay, and then you're using oh, the yeah. Neumanns, right? Yeah, now. Neumann 120s surrounding. Um, I figured that was probably a good pairing with the Dutch and Dutch for now. Um, yeah. And we'll see when Dutch and Dutch comes out with their smaller speaker if it'll work in here, because I don't want it to feel too cramped. And if you also notice, there's no center channel. So most Atmos rooms have a center channel but I'm such a stickler for like what's in front of me and yes. what's messing with my stereo image yes. like I was even hesitant to put a TV on the wall yeah I got it tuned and, and where I want it with these two speakers so I, I use a phantom center channel for Atmos Whoa. so like you got to sit in the middle if you shift your head like yeah like you can feel it left or right yeah but there's not this giant thing in the, speaker yeah. in the middle how's the uh transition with work and workflow and mm -hmm. going from two to how many do you have in here now? So I think it's 12 channels all together in mm -hmm. Atmos. It's like if I'm flipping back and forth in Pro Tools between the master, the stereo master and Atmos, I can see the box. I can feel the box of the stereo. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I flip that channel, like it opens up. So I love listening to Atmos in the room. It can be a different story in headphones as most people have right. mixed feelings sure. about it. I'm there to serve the needs, sure. so it works. But has anything changed otherwise? Cause you were, what were you using before? Just the Apollo? Yeah, so I was using the Apollo and then I still kind of use that in mixing and tracking some, but then the Avid is like the main brain of the studio. I changed out the Hackintosh for the mm. M1. There you go. One thing that I didn't know about that I feel like people should know is like you, you kind of have to have like an HDX system for this, to, mm -hmm. for it to communicate. But those PCI cards need a chassis and the chassis are loud. You know yeah. what I mean? It's extra stuff. Yep. And I found out too late, like I sold my card. I had the HDX card, but these little boxes are an HD Thunderbolt connection. Yeah. And I didn't either. even know about them when I was buying all this. I, I hope people know that you don't have to get a PCI card and a chassis and all of this. Like that little thing is about a thousand dollars. So that can be your HD connection. HD is great for inserts because of the low latency. Mm -hmm. And it's great for like the IO and just the power behind it. Mm -hmm. But like when I just need outputs, you know, like yeah. the dad man thing, I'm on board. Yeah. And to get dad man, I gotta get that. And yeah. to get that, I've gotta get the HD. Yep. But this runs Dante. Like I think that's kind of the future of audio connections. Yeah, it's it's a powerful box, and I'm sure yeah. Mogami and and uh, all the big cable companies don't like Dante. <laughs> yeah, big big cable. I know, <laughs> but yeah, man. Uh, since then, upgraded some mics. Like I know, like I I sold a bunch of stuff to build this spot. Yeah, and then Atmos came along, invested in that, and then slowly I'm piecing together other tools, mics and pre's and stuff like that to eventually do some tracking. But for now, staying busy with mixing. When, what was the timeline on deciding to make the Atmos switch? I changed these speakers and that's when Atmos started becoming a thing is beginning of 2021 and caught the mm. buzz. So it was like March when I was putting together buy list stuff. Yeah. And I pulled the trigger in the summer and got my first projects kind of like July, August. So I, I guess it's been like a year and a half of doing Atmos stuff. Whoa. Okay, so when you got it, you got it installed pretty fast. We were waiting on a few things, but for the most part, it took like a month to kind of consolidate all the buy list and what I really need. Because that's the hard part with Atmos is like, there's so much that you could do with it and it's very scalable, yeah. you know? 
and I wanted to do it right. Like I didn't want to just take a bunch of shortcuts and sure. feel like I compromised. Yeah. But you also don't want to like overpay and do the you know hundred thousand dollar system that really you don't need. It, curating that the right combo took a little bit. But then it was like pull the trigger, order the stuff. Yeah. Westlake kind of helped me curate that list. Um, and then uh, Westlake was out of some stuff. Sweetwater had some stuff. And so I kind of pieced it together between the two of them. Um, and one thing that was great is like Sweetwater, one of these speakers, that one went out mm -hmm. one day and I was like deep in some projects. Like I had to keep oh, going yeah. and I called up Sweetwater and they like exchanged one in like six hours. It was here wow. the next day at 10 a.m. Oh yeah. So That's great. big shout out to them for taking care of me. Dolby came and tuned it and got it all like unified. Mounting these, mm -hmm. who, like did you mount them or did, I did. Dolby so, or? So there's a, a spreadsheet called the Dart that Dolby sends you and you program, like you put in your room dimensions, you put in all the things about your room, where your front speakers are. Yeah. And they calculate where you need to put things. And then yeah. you have like this window of deviation that uh -huh. it'll kind of work in. And so you just know the spots. So then you just go in and anchor it in. And you just hope your cloud's not in the way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it almost was. And I I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at the bit. mounts up there. I'm like, man, that was just like I know. slid right in uh, the little yep. pocket in there. Well, and originally I had bought all Dutch and Dutch to do it too. Oh, like I bought yeah. seven Dutch and Dutch to it's put handy. in here. And then um, I was going to do these up top. But like that speaker would have had to be like right oh, yeah. here. Yep. A big old thing. It just got too close. And so, yep. yeah, uh, maybe someday I'll put in an all Dutch and Dutch Atmos room somewhere in Nashville. Pretty freaking rad. I, uh, I don't know how any of it can translate over through video. Obviously it can't through our, our little lavaliers, no. through YouTube compression <laughs> and all that stuff. But yeah, um, well, I mean, there's, there's like playlists, you know, Apple music, there's Atmos playlists and I've got a playlist of stuff that I've done. Yeah. So like it's out there. They, they listen on headphones. But. Yeah. I was, I was going to say for those who have an Atmos room or, or I guess you, it, I don't understand how it works on headphones. Yeah, I mean, the algorithm tries to pare it down to be binaural, um, which it, it loses some essence in translation. There are dudes that have spent their whole lives with those computer algorithms, and I don't even know what they're doing. Yeah. I just know that it's not quite there yet, and yeah. I wish it was. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, if anybody's in Nashville and they want to come listen, Check it out. they can. Yeah, great job. Beautiful room. This place not only is set up functionally, and acoustically, construction, everything is gorgeous, but also just aesthetically, such a vibe, great cable management. These are the sort of details that I, I uh, obsess over. Congratulations, this is awesome. I'll put links to Warren down in the description. Give him a follow if you're in Nashville, hit him up. Maybe you can yeah. come listen to the room, get some mixes done, and we'll see you guys in the next one.